The most popular video I ever did here was how to design your life, my process for achieving goals. Now, going into this new year, all of us like to think we are better than we really are and that we will really achieve our goals and we mean it, but does it ever really happen? In this video, I wanna share a simple process. I'm gonna walk through it, you can do it with me right now, that I'm gonna use for setting my goals this year to make sure that at least some of them happen. What's up you guys, Alex Hine here. Now before we jump in, there's a free goal setting worksheet right below this video. Grab that for planning out the best year ever of your life and then go through this exercise in this video at the same time, all right? Step one, no fluff today. I always like to start the year with asking one power question, which is that if three things happened this year, three goals, what three things would they have to be for my life to be amazing this year? Like really life-changing outcomes. And I'm not just saying make a gajillion dollars, but realistically or unrealistically, truly, what three things would have to happen? Is it fall in love? Is it make 10,000 more dollars? Is it double your salary? Is it have friends? Is it not be sick? Like what three things have to happen that would dramatically change your life? So let's jump in here. I'm gonna jump in right to this Evernote document. We're gonna plan it out right now. Making 2022 epic goals and visions. Phase one, three goals that will make your life awesome. So let's say number one for me, let's just say it is I wanna earn an extra 1,000 a month because that's what I know I need to save to pay off my student debt, to have savings, to help my parents, to travel. All right, that's goal one. Goal number two is gonna be, let's just say it's get fit and lose my COVID-20, okay? I actually lost about 10 pounds, so I need to gain that weight back due to anxiety. Goal number three is going to be, let's say, sleep well every night, i.e. feel well, right? Let's just call this a mental health goal because a lot of us need that. So phase one, pick three goals or outcomes that if those happened, this would be the best year ever. Limit it to three, because more than three gets overwhelming when we get to the habits portion of this goal setting. And I think three is really enough because it really forces you to think, what quadrants of my life am I struggling with the most? And what quadrants would really make a big difference if they were improved, okay? Now, phase two, pick three habits for each of those outcomes or goals. So, three habits for each. So let's copy and paste these. So goal number one, earning an extra thousand a month. Well, if let's just say I'm a salaried employee and either getting a raise or getting another job or a second job is really the only way I could do that. Earning an extra thousand a month. So let's just say I ask my boss for a raise every six months. Habit two is gonna be work one extra day per week, right? Coffee shop if you have to, a side gig, your own side hustle, random odd jobs, running TaskRabbit, Uber Eats, delivery, whatever it is, just for that extra thousand a month, all right? Habit two, work one extra day per week. Habit three, what else could we do for earning an extra 1,000 a month? Let's say I could spend, spend 30 minutes a night researching new jobs. So now, earning extra 1,000 a month, we have three rituals that done regularly will likely in increase the chances of having that outcome, right? You don't wanna have a goal because a goal means nothing. You want a daily ritual. Let's go to number two. Get fit and lose my COVID-20, all right? Habit one, habit two, habit three. Habit one is gonna be, let's say I'm gonna just start cooking my own meals five days a week, right? That's the ritual. Cook my own meals Monday through Friday. After that, free pass. Habit number two, I'm going to start working out with a friend at work for accountability and then the no-show buys lunch, okay? So this habit is I'm gonna start working out with a friend at work, let's just say three times a week. So now you have a core habit there. And the third one for habit number three, lose my COVID-20, I'm going to get more sleep so I'm not craving junk the next day. Or let's just say, or eat breakfast. 
or uh, no more muffins for breakfast, you know, uh, no ice cream at night, whatever it is, like pick another ritual, something that you're pretty confident is one of the reasons why you're not able to lose this weight. But most important, a daily ritual, something you do every day. Now, goal number three, habit number one, sleep well every night. Let's just say one hour before bed, no electronics. Habit number two, no working past eight. Let's say you're someone like me who works a lot or has a tendency or maybe you have to work a lot. You're a single mom or you're putting yourself through university and you're working. No work past eight. That's ritual two. And habit three, sleep well every night. Let's just say uh, eat dinner no later than seven and no drinks at night, right? Maybe you live in New York or LA or SF or where you live, getting drinks at night after work is just a thing you do. And you notice that, hey, having wine at eight or nine or 10 p.m. and then going to bed at 11.30 doesn't really work too well for you. So you have three habits now, three rituals for this phase, okay? Now let's jump into the next phase, tracking your daily rituals. So the big thing for me, and the main reason I wrote my book, Master of the Day, is I realized for myself and for my coaching clients that if you take anything you want to achieve, and the only mindset shift you do is, instead of having a goal, you have a daily ritual that's associated with that goal. You're way more likely to do it and way more likely to be successful. It's like if you say, I want to write a book versus write 1,000 words a day or write for an hour a day. This is going to happen. This is not going to happen. Or if the goal is get a significant other, turn that into, I'm going to go to three new social events a week, every week. This is going to happen. It's tangible. This is not going to happen, usually by itself. Or to get fit or build that business instead of, you know, instead of this, I'm going to spend one hour a day working on my business. Or I'm going to work out the first 30 minutes, 20 minutes every morning. This is tangible and concrete. This is not. So the next phase of this is really breaking it into a daily and a weekly scoreboard. So I want to show you this here now. When it comes to tracking your daily rituals, I have two methods of accountability here, which is I have a little whiteboard behind my desk at home, and I have a massive six foot whiteboard that's in my kitchen because I'm always in there cooking or cleaning or I work in there too sometimes. So this whiteboard is just my scoreboard. Just like if your goal is to get straight A's this term, then you probably should be aware of that goal in some way, shape, or form, right? So just by having that visual reminder, I just glance over it the first 10 minutes of every morning. I eat breakfast, drink whatever I'm going to drink, and I'm just reading those goals. Step one is sleeping well. Step two is making new friends. Step three is a serious relationship. Step four, saving 100 a month, whatever it is. But just having that and looking at it regularly increases the odds of your success. Okay, that's called the scoreboard, your daily rituals and your weekly rituals, your, your habits that you're doing. Now, let's do the final step, which is doing a weekly review, weekly habit review. So now let's say, for example, we were working on earning an extra thousand a month, right? This was the main thing you wanted. And you started doing these things, right? You, you, let's say, ask my boss for a raise every six months became, uh, I'm going to over deliver every day. I'm going to take on new projects. I'm going to work with my team more. I'm going to ask my boss, what would it take for me to get a raise? In other words, what, to what extent would I have to work or what would I have to work on? And let's say you are working one extra day per week in a coffee shop. And let's say you are spending 30 minutes a night researching jobs, but you're not reaching that goal. And it's been a few weeks or a few months. The weekly habit review is A, did I do it? And if not, why did I not do it? What was the hard part of that? And B, what needs changing? So the A, were these habits working? Like maybe you realize for some reason you're just not gonna get a raise from your boss. So maybe you replace habit one with another habit, which is maybe honestly getting a second job or getting some part-time work in addition to your work already. Maybe you realize, you know, working one extra day per week at that coffee shop gives you an extra hundred bucks, but now you're only getting 400 a month and not a thousand. So now you need to think, how could I earn a thousand instead of 400? Maybe I need to freelance photography or videography. Maybe I need to do some programming jobs or maybe I need to tutor a language, something to increase your dollar per hour earnings. So this weekly habit review, then we basically say, you know, habit one, 
maybe instead of the raise, maybe what I need to do now is change this to working extra gigs because it's just more predictable and it's more controllable. And then maybe have it too, you are working extra gigs, but they're not paying you enough for that 1000 a month. So now for this one, instead of coffee shops, let's say you're going to freelance video work because that's a skill you have or freelance programming or tech work, whatever it is. This weekly habit review helps you understand what's working, what's not working, and is it really enough to help you reach that goal of yours? So this four-step process, if you do this, if you just do this, this is the master of the day philosophy. It's the whole point of my book, why the title is a mnemonic device to remember it. The point is to turn whatever big goal you want into a daily ritual. And if you can turn an endpoint goal into a daily ritual, track that and update it, you are way more likely to reach that goal than if you just have a goal or a vision board or whatever it is. Because none of those things tell you how to reach that goal. None of those things say you right now, Alex, I have one hour. What am I going to do in this next hour to reach my goals? If you look at a vision board with a hot girl or a hot guy and a Lamborghini and a house on the beach in Malibu, <laughs> where do I find that girl? How, where does she find that guy? How do I get that Lambo? How do I get that house? How do I get the inner peace, the puppy, whatever you want? It doesn't tell you how to get it. But if that board has pictures and then habits to do right now, you know exactly what you have to do because that is tangible and that is something you can do. All right, guys, I hope that helps you get through 2022 quickly and helps you reach your goals fast. Again, there's a free goal setting worksheet right below this video that'll help you plan out how to have the best year ever of your life. So download that and go through it because it's really gonna help you, all right? I have two other videos for you right here and I'll catch you guys soon.